where do the ultra high net worth, the richest people, the smartest people in the game, where do they put their money? And they talk a lot about alternative investments. So it's funny, you told me this morning there, the headline you saw about Warren Buffett's protege kind of doing a spinoff of smaller private equity. Well, private equity is one of those places that a lot of the richest people, they put the, the, they buy in. He talks about sports, okay? Sports teams. That's the new, that's the new uh, sought after asset for high net worth. If they can own a piece of the, mm. the Boston Red Sox, of, of uh, the LA soccer team, of whatever, the Patriots, they're going to do it. Why? Because it's so lucrative. These teams, they have monopolies. Whether you're in a recession or not, people are going to be at those games. So Ray Dalio talks about how do you build that holy grail portfolio? That's what he called the holy grail of investing. And it's all about diversification. And how do you find 8 to 12 assets that have a small correlation to each other? People, normal investors, they don't have access to that many investments that they'll react in different ways and in different markets. I mean, you have stocks, you have bonds. We saw last year that debt diversification didn't do anything. The market dropped by 20, the bonds dropped by 15, 20 as well because of inflation. So the, the, these ultra high net worth, they're invested in private equity and private credit. They'll buy out sports teams. They'll buy alternative assets. They'll own real estate, infrastructure. So it's extremely interesting. Uh, we've started implementing alternative assets for our clients, Zach, and it's actually done very well. It's another part of the portfolio that we can invest in for, for our clients. So one thing's for sure, the industry is going to be changing quite a bit. There's going to be a lot more uh, access to these types of investments, and now it's to find a way, and that's what he's pushing on big uh, hard. It's because how do someone that isn't an accredited investor that needs a minimum of $100 million net worth, not including the primary residence or 200 k of income a year, how do they get access to these things? And not only that, I mean, once you do, there's like there's so many people going after it is these big firms are just selling out to the biggest bidder. So it's only the ultra rich. So there's things that are changing. Uh, we're, we're not going to talk about it today, but there's some good stuff that we might be getting access to for our clients there shortly that we're working mm -hmm. on. So, I mean, look, we're that's why we're always reading, Zach. That's why we're always looking at what we have access because we want to make sure that we're always a step ahead for our clients, for our business, for what we can do for the people. And we just have to stay up to date because times are changing. We have to make sure that we're able to grow our clients' money for the long term and have a higher expected return. And look, we've seen it with pension funds, Zach. Back in the day, you could have a CPP that could be invested 100% in bonds, and they'll have their 7% target with a very low variation. But nowadays, to be able to hit that 7% a year, you have to have so much more. The alternative asset portion of these big pension funds are up significantly. So uh, no, it's the, the landscape's changing. And uh, so yeah, alternatives, you'll see it's on the rise. And when it comes to headlines and news, just keep buying. I mean, if you've got 20 years ahead of you, it's we. I love looking at the news because I love to, to know what's happening, what's going on in the world to see mm. where things are going. But if they're telling me all to sell, I'm just, I'm just, I'll keep buying at a discount. And I know long-term I'm, I'm not smart enough to time the market. So I'll just keep buying it at all times. If this is where the ultra rich put their money, how accessible is it for the common man? Yeah. So there's a couple things to <clears throat> there. I won't start sharing names, but there's some big firms right now in Canada, especially that they're making it accessible for the common person. So that's going to help I'll follow up after too. Yeah. So <clears throat> one thing though, it's that these alternative investments, Zach, there is a significant lockup period. Sometimes you can't touch your money for five years. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that works in your plan as well to go and say, look, I mean, look, people do it all the time with the GIC and they're willing to lock it up at one, 2%. Mm -hmm. 
when some of these private equity deals, you lock it up, but you're making 15, 20%. I mean, you know, there's a big difference. Yeah. Um, one thing they're looking at in the States, Zach, and I think it's th going through Congress right now that he was mentioning in the book. It's the whole concept of being an accredited investor. It didn't make sense that, okay, why is it just that the ultra wealthy, or at that point, not even the ultra wealthy, just someone that has a million dollars of net worth, why are they the only ones getting access to the better stuff? Why can't someone that's trying to get there have access to it? And like, you know what? Okay, it's a good point. So they, it seems like they're trying to pass a bill where if someone that isn't yet at an accredited status could take a test to make sure they have the competencies to understand exactly, okay, they understand well, perfect. You can go and invest in these things that you would necessarily be need to be accredited for. One thing that changed in our landscape here in Canada is the access to liquid alternatives, which, right. uh, so a liquid alternative is, is an alternative strategy investment, which they can use leverage, yet there's daily liquidity. So if a client needs to sell out, they can sell out and it's traded like a, like a normal fund. So that we've already started implementing for our clients. We have some great partners that have different strategies. And I'll look, I'll share some right now. There's a market neutral strategy that we put in place for, for our clients, which they'll buy a certain basket of stocks. They'll sell a certain basket of stocks. And their correlation to the market is pretty much at zero with a beta of zero. There's some that it's uh, arbitrage. They can do uh, derivatives so they can sell calls and puts to generate income. So there's there's these different types of alternatives. And they've done well for our clients in these past few years, especially with correlation up quite a bit. So it's just, that's a, a first step. And uh, it's just to see how this industry is changing. But we're going to make sure that if there are changes, that we're ready to take those on for uh, for our clients.